Tom Bowen here for Premier Guitar. Today we are talking five essential Dave Matthews guitar riffs that you need to check out. If you are a fan of Dave Matthews Band, it's no surprise to you that Dave does some really cool things on the guitar and in a way that really nobody else does. But if you haven't dug into their catalog, maybe you're only familiar with the radio hits, these things might have escaped you, and I think these five riffs are the best entry point for a guitar player to get interested in what Dave Matthews does. First up is a song called Gray Street. Now this song is normally played on a 12 string acoustic guitar. However, you can get the idea on a six string as well, and it features a quintessential Dave Matthews chord shape, and that is basically a two note chord. So instead of playing a full B minor bar chord, he's actually just playing the root and the minor third, like this. Now this is in a ton of early Dave Matthews songs. Tripping Billies, Too Much, Lover Lay Down, the list goes on, it is everything Dave, and if you learned any of the stuff from the 90s, you absolutely saw that he used these chord shapes quite a bit. Gray Street came a little bit later, but it is a really cool example, especially on the 12 string, of something that is very much Dave Matthews. Satellite is often one of the first riffs that people try to learn if they're digging into Dave Matthews' catalog, and that's because it is unlike really any other riff out there if you've never played Dave Matthews' songs. Now, it's basically a finger exercise, and he's described it as that when he talks about how he wrote the song. But it's really, really cool. It's difficult to sing over. Now, I've actually modified the fingering from the way Dave plays it. I play everything right here. <laughs> the same notes, it does sound a little bit differently because Dave actually does that at the beginning and then continues on with some alternate fingerings. What I will say is when possible, if possible, play the riffs the way Dave plays them because that is part of the magic. Yes, you can figure out the notes, but when you watch him play and you figure out where he's playing those notes, that's part of the fun and that's part of the puzzle that you unlock with these riffs. I need to take my own advice and I need to really work on the real way to play Satellite. I've got my way, which is the right notes, like I said, but the fun of all these riffs is learning how to play them the way he plays them. So that would be my suggestion. If you think you know how to play one of his songs, go watch him and make sure that you're playing it just like he does. Speaking of stretches, so much to say involves some pretty wide stretches across the fretboard that are basically unavoidable if you want to play this song. It is a really cool song, it's got a ton of energy, the original arrangement and studio recording is phenomenal and it really, really prominently features this acoustic guitar part right off the top. Now like I said, stretches are a must here. You've got the opening riff. <laughs> which is funky and cool, but later on in the verse, when you get to, you got this, oh, it's a big stretch. You're going from one, three to five, sliding up here, playing a very interesting version of D minor, and then doing another stretch, three, five, seven, and you really can't avoid that like I did with Satellite. So this is one of those instances where you gotta try to get as close as you possibly can to the way he plays it. Now I am modifying still to make it make sense for me. But again, like I said, try to do this the way Dave Matthews does it. This is a really fun riff. It's a lot of energy. It's a lot of different things and kind of includes a whole bunch of different Dave-isms on guitar. You get some slides, you get some really percussive things happening in the right hand you get some big stretches, and then you get a version of that Dave Matthews chord shape we talked about with Gray Street.
Now, Rhyme and Reason is probably a little bit under the radar for most casual Dave Matthews Band listeners. This is a song that appeared on their first major label record, Under the Table and Dreaming, and it contains one of the coolest riffs I think Dave Matthews has ever written and played. It's a lot here, but what's interesting about it is it actually features some pretty familiar chord shapes. The open E chord shape we all know and love is basically what you're doing for those first three little groupings of notes. And he uses it in a way that I would never think to use. And then you get the infamous or famous Dave Matthews two note chord into another big stretch. But you put it all together and you get a pretty interesting little riff. Now, what you might have noticed when I played there is something happened. I hit some strings I didn't intend to hit. And this is an opportunity to highlight something that Dave Matthews is incredibly good at, and that is muting strings that he doesn't want to play. His left hand is doing a lot, and he's playing a lot of notes and fretting a lot of notes, but if you notice, his right hand is very percussive and it is always moving. So that means you're gonna have to really help yourself and mute strings you don't wanna play with your left hand, and he is incredibly good at doing that, especially in these more complex, rhythmic, moving riffs across the fretboard. You can really get yourself in trouble and start playing notes you don't wanna play if you're not careful. So, have to be muting things with your left hand you don't wanna play, and on this riff, when he gets into the verse, he starts to palm mute too, to sort of give some contrast and get out of the way of the vocal a little bit. So when you combine those two things, you get that really interesting Dave Matthews sound on an acoustic guitar with these very cool chord shapes and ideas that he's developed from familiar things like the open E shape. So I saved the most fun for last, and this is a song called Seven. And if you were paying attention, we had some different time signatures in that riff. Now this song kind of goes all over the place, and I tried to cram in the three main parts that are played in the song during that intro. And you notice you go from 4-4 four, four, to 7 to 5. Very interesting. You gotta count closely. Now, if you know Dave Matthews Band, you know the rhythm section with Carter Beaufort and Stefan Lassard is incredible and odd meter stuff pops up every once in a while. So let's break down the three sections of the song that I kind of crammed together at the beginning of this. First, you get the one that's in four. One, two, three, four, one, two, three, four. Pretty straightforward, some double stops. We are in drop D tuning. So we get that G power chord going uh, and it's really cool, but you'll notice very quickly that it changes to seven. So you get one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, which is this part. So you got this descending bass line. And then the riff that repeats itself over top. It's really cool, but you'll see singing over that would be nuts. Uh, I mean, I'm sure you could do it, but hey, when you're Dave Matthews and you don't have to challenge yourself like that anymore, why not? Let Tim Reynolds handle it and it sounds great. The last part of this group of riffs is actually in five and that's this section. <laughs> Well, 
one, two, three, or four, five, one, two, three, four, five. If you're trying to tap your foot at a show, it's actually gonna become very difficult if you don't know when these sections are coming, going from four to seven to five, back to seven. It goes all over the place, but it's a really cool song. So sit down, listen, try to count it out, and then learn the riff. If you wanna start experimenting with transitioning between odd time signatures, this song is a really cool way to do it. I will say though, once you get it in your head as to what it sounds like, stop counting. Just play the riffs as you hear them in your head. That's what I do at least. To figure it out at first, yes, I had to count one, two, three, four, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, and one, two, three, four, five. But once you get into the groove, especially if you play along with the record, that sort of melts away and the song just makes sense. On paper at first, it's kind of confusing, but it's such a well-written song and such a fun tune to listen to and eventually play along with that all these crazy time signature things just make sense and you get in the groove and you have a great time. So those are my five essential Dave Matthews riffs. I wanna know what yours would be because there are tons of songs that demonstrate all of the things that we talked about today. So list those in the comments below and let me know what you would have picked for your five Dave Matthews riffs that really display what he does as a guitar player and why it's so unique. If you haven't subscribed yet to the Premier Guitar YouTube channel, make sure you do so so you don't miss future lesson videos, gear reviews, rig rundowns, you name it, Premier Guitar has it here, and we'll see you in the next video.